Joining us on line number one is the Chief Operating Officer and Chairman of Geophysical Service Incorporated. They're an oil and gas exploration company. They're based in Calgary, out in Alberta, and of course they're the company also involved in a challenge with the CNLOPB regarding the seismic data that was used to identify some opportunities offshore of Labrador. Line number one, hello Paul Einerson, you're on the air, sir. Hello. Good afternoon. Nice to be here. Well, I'm glad you called, sir. Why don't you go ahead and describe to the folks what it is your issue is with the government and the CNLOPB? Well, there's quite a few. Um, we have uh, basically uh, Newfoundland has decided to pursue pursue a policy that is uh, akin to the Napster and what Napster has done. In my opinion, uh, was bad for creators of intellectual property it was bad for the people that received it who had no right to have it and it was bad for napster and they're no longer in business versus a model like itunes where it supports the creators of intellectual property it uh, is a good deal for uh, recipients of the information and it's a good deal for itunes and apple so there's two different models and Newfoundland is, is pursuing one that is that is a failed model. And so we are talking about the protection of IP, which is in the oil and gas business one of the most valued components of their business, especially in exploration. So this one, if I understand it correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, sir, this is about seismic data conducted by your company and others that was taken by uh, Nalcor or other entities and used as verification of potential for hydrocarbons off Labrador with no consideration or compensation offered to you. Is that right? Uh, not entirely, but the, the concept is correct, yes. And so from there, is this a legal argument that you have uh, pursued with other companies or other provinces that have done the same, or is this a new boat for you folks? Well, in Alberta, for example, uh, when a company like ours collects seismic data, you don't submit it to anybody, and it's owned privately and it's protected privately, and there is a robust system of trading and licensing that goes on here. In Newfoundland, uh, they want to basically take that data and give it away for free to promote the province, and that is a completely different uh, approach that, um, it, it, that, you know, is, is completely different from what's occurring in Alberta. So was your challenge based on uh, the legality of it, or where where do you come where are you coming from? Other than the fact that it's different from what you're used to. Well, uh, well, it's it's yeah, obviously the legality of it. Uh, if you own something, uh, you don't want a government to be able to come and just take it away from you and not compensate you. Is it uh, is it public? Taxes, taxes oh, are one thing, and we pay our taxes, and we shouldn't have our assets taken away without compensation. So we have several matters that we're pursuing in the courts. One is in Nova Scotia, the right of these uh, offshore boards to even ask for or get our data. We don't even think they have the right to do that. We certainly believe that they don't have the right to disclose it and, and uh, expand the disclosure like they've done. It's basically been a bait and switch. They've kept expanding the disclosure to now they're at a point where customers, which are the tapes of the data. So how do they get so, their hands on it? It's not public information, so to speak. Uh, I have a little bit of background knowledge in the seismic uh, area and exploration. So where are they getting their hands on it? This is something you've given to customers as a uh, process of selling the data, or they got it through third party? How did they get it in the first place? Well, there's two ways. One is that they ask us to submit a copy to them for regulatory purposes. And that sounded, you know, innocent enough that they're trying to manage the resource and they needed a copy of this. So we gave it. They also, uh, there's also a bit of confusion between data that a company like mine acquires versus an oil company. An oil company is bidding a work commitment offshore Newfoundland and Labrador. So they say, we're going to spend $100 million collecting seismic, drilling wells, hiring geophysicists and geologists, and that's called a work commitment bid, and that's how it works in Newfoundland. 
But what they do is they cause these oil companies to hand in my data so that they get credits toward that work commitment bid. Right. Which is which they don't have a right to do. That is that is my information, not the oil company's information. So at this so point, what, I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead and continue your report. Go go ahead. I was just going to ask because that this is this is going to make its way in front of a judge, right? Is that the end result of this? There, well, there's quite a few lawsuits on this matter, so I hope to and get so in front of a judge. At that point, uh, are we betraying your position and or the government's by having this conversation uh, openly on the airwaves, given the fact you hope it ends up in front of a justice? Not at all. I'm just okay. talking in general concepts. I'm not going through all of the legal uh, bits and pieces and the law with you. I'm just talking for informational purposes yep. about the policy. This is stuff that you can read on the websites of the Offshore Petroleum Board. You can read in articles that I have put out and in interviews that I've put out. So this is no uh, top secret information, certainly not. Well, I just asked that just to clarify for those listening, wondering that exact thing while they listen in their home or cars. The value of the data that was used, what would that normally be on the open market, whether it be here in Newfoundland, Alberta, or elsewhere? Well, uh, the marine seismic data is uh, probably a quarter of the cost of land seismic data. So when somebody in Alberta hears licensing seismic data, uh, it's significantly more expensive than marine data because marine data is more efficient to put a ship together and all of the recording equipment and the crew and keep them busy 12 months a year. It is a very efficient way to collect data. So in terms of the cost of it, it is quite inexpensive looking at other seismic data. And the companies that explore offshore Newfoundland or anywhere offshore tend to be bigger companies because of the costs of drilling offshore and then eventually putting any sort of production facilities are billions and billions of dollars. This is not a area that small companies necessarily play in. Yeah, and we see that in action here all the time. The juniors have a very uh, a very small chance of getting involved in all facets of exploration and then production. Hey, anything else you'd like to say in summary, sir, before we move on? Uh, well, no, it's just, uh, you know, it's a big issue. It's really about, it's a property rights issue. It's about government being able to come and take something from you without paying for it. And, you know, my, my uh, word of caution to everybody is who's next? You know, what happens when the government wants to come and take something from you and not pay you for it? Uh, that's why it's relevant to everybody in this country, and it's a very important issue. Oh, without question, and in particular in the oil and gas business here, the IP conversation, not only in the private sector, but also in how we do business with academia and their need and want to hold on to IP, which contributes to any potential for profit or any further business ventures in the private sector. So it's a huge issue, and we all completely understand that in the Flan Labrador. I appreciate your time, sir. We will keep a close eye on the developments in this matter. Okay, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Paul Anderson, the COO of, and the Chairman of Geophysical Service Incorporated. It's a tricky issue, and uh, his word of warning at the end of who may be next to be subjected to that type of operations from government and or crown corporations. IP is a tricky one, man. The intellectual property piece is very murky, even in the court of law. There's so many new fangled areas where people have created IP and where they try and protect IP. We don't have the laws in place all the time, to speak to those specifics directly. I'll get a rebuttal from the government or a counterpoint from NALCOR, whatever the case may be, to put both sides on the table. We'll try and do that for our listeners ASAP.